Welcome to my video about disassembling the Korg T2 synthesizer. Of course, this is also about disassembling all other Korg T series synthesizers because they are very similar and I think this will also work. This video is just about the disassembling, so there won't be any talk about technical things, about hardware or about software and um, I'm not going to show you any sounds or patches, so this is just the pure disassembling. First you have to plug out the power, so that nothing can happen. Turn the synth on its front side. Use some soft ground, some pillow or something similar. Make sure that the synth does not lie on its joystick because it could break. And you should prepare some sheets of paper and make a lot of notes and mark uh, which screw was in which position. So this is uh, a page from the service manual of the Cork T-Series. As you see, there are really a lot of screws. Of course, you mustn't and you shouldn't uh, disassemble everything, though you could if you want, but you don't want, believe me. Okay, first you have to remove the metal back of the synth. There are about uh, 21 screws, I think, so I'll skip that a bit. Now you can remove the metal plate. Be careful and don't hurt yourself. And this is the inside. On the left side you see the memory board. This is the main board of the Korg series. And on the right side you see the input-output board with MIDI and uh, audio jacks. And in the lower right corner you see the floppy drive. Okay, now you can remove this uh, metal frame from the keypad. And now you can move this, uh, I don't know what it is, it feels like plastic, but maybe it's some kind of uh, metal layer or foil. And now you can remove the memory board. Plug out the connector on the right side. and then remove all four screws. Here you see another um, plastic layer for isolation and below this is the power supply. This is the main board. 
First you should plug out all cables. This white thick cable is a very thin connector and you have to pull out a thin black plastic frame and then remove the cable very carefully. All other connectors should work normally. This last one is the keyboard connector. And now there are some screws. If you want to remove the board, there is a little problem. Because it sticked to this additional plastic layer I showed you before. So you should remove this little plastic layer. There are two screws, then you can pull it out with a little force. And there you go. And now you see another flat connector. So the same here. You have to pull up a very thin plastic frame which you can't remove so don't try it just pull it a little bit up and then you can remove this flat foil connector like this And now you can black out the power connector of the main board. If you want to remove this metal part, you should be very carefully. Just remember which screw was on which position, because when you use the wrong screw on the wrong side, you can easily break a black key from the keyboard. Because the screw is the, the upper screw is on, on a position above um, a black key, and um, when it's too long, it will just screw into the black key to a part of the key which holds the key in position. So when this part breaks, the key is not held in position anymore and it will just jump out and can't be used anymore. So remember to be very careful, don't use any force here, because these keys 
as replace, um, replacement parts are not that cheap. And believe me, because I did that. And now you can go on and remove the power supply. You just have to remove the blue part. The blue part is some kind of metal frame. And the yellow part is the power supply board. So it's enough to remove the metal frame because the board is fixed to the frame completely. And there are two screws on the back side for this metal frame. And don't forget about the two screws in the middle. Okay, you can go on with the input-output board. Again, there is this flat connector. And there are a lot of screws on the back side. Notice that the screws for the MIDI connectors are not the same as for the audio jacks. That's it. So, you see a lot of cables here. Again you can remove the metal frame to which the input output board was connected. And you can remove of course all cables like this one for the floppy drive. If you want to remove the keyboard, you have to remove this silver layer. And if you want to remove the silver layer, you have to remove the metal frames. And you have to remove this thing here. Now you can go on with the keyboard. First you should remove the electronics. There are really a lot of screws so I skipped that a bit. And you should always first remove the electronics carefully. And if you reassemble the synth again you should mount that after you mounted the key bed with the keys because they're really thin um, 
metal parts which can be bent very easily so there are these shiny parts here as you see it and you should treat them very carefully and you can believe me because I bent them unfortunately and it really wasn't fun to get the, this thing work again Okay, you can go on with six screws of the floppy drive, where the first two of them help to keep the keypad in position. So if you want to remove the keypad, you have first to remove this floppy drive. And on the left side, there are two more screws. Notice that the two ends of this metal plate are different. And now you can move the keypad with the keys. But not completely, because first you have to remove the aftertouch connector. And if you want to, you can also remove the aftertouch electronics. And you can also remove the joystick if you want to. If you want to remove the silver layer, there are really, really, really a lot of screws, so I skip that too. This is rather boring and annoying, but if you want to see the display and the button board, Unfortunately, you have to remove this thing. So here you see the electronics for the buttons and the display in the middle. This one is the volume switch and from this angle you see two of the aluminum frames which are used intensively to hold screws for different boards So this board here is for the buttons, yeah, these are the buttons. Remember carefully how the buttons are placed. This is very important for the reassembly. And this is the display. 
Now I want to show you how you can remove the keys from the keypad. First, you have to remove this plastic clip on the back side. Then you have to push the key to the back side and then push it up a little bit. And now you have this key in your hand. And as you see, there is a little metal plate which is used as a spring. Okay, so this was my video about disassembling a Korg T-Series synthesizer. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you want, please leave a comment, like the video or dislike it. If you dislike it, please uh, let me know why you disliked the video. And if you want to repeat these steps for your synthesizer, I wish you good luck. I think I'm going to make more videos about uh, the hardware, the software of the synth and of course show you some, some uh, patches. So thanks for watching this video and have a nice day.